G'day guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a truly budget sim racing setup. So cast your mind back about a month and a half now, I did a video series on the Next Level Racing Challenger cockpit along with the Fnatic CSL Elite. And a few of you got a little bit upset that I was calling that a budget setup. Now the reason I called it that was simply because it was using Fnatic's entry level gear, the cheapest stuff that they sell. And I was comparing it basically to a professional grade or commercial grade sim racing setup. So you know, direct drive wheelbase, things like that but I know a lot of you were sort of wanting to see what a cheaper setup looked like and how that kind of fared up against it so a subscriber has very very kindly donated his Logitech G920 that he's no longer using to the channel so we can test it out on the next level racing wheel stand racer so just quickly referring to my cheat notes here this product will set you back 179 Australian dollars now that includes shipping as well and when you consider that the product itself weighs about nine kilos, add another kilo on top of that for the packaging and things like that. So we're looking at around about 10 kilograms and I can tell you from when I donated my old Logitech G27 to a subscriber a while back, that cost me $80 to send from Sydney across to Perth. So when you consider that they're including free shipping in the price of this, I think that that is pretty reasonable. But of course, we'll come back and we'll reflect on that once we've had a chance to actually look at the product. But if you're in the US, it's 119 US dollars. And if you include shipping on top of that as well. I had a bit of a look around on the net and the cheapest price I could find was around about 149 US dollars including shipping and I will include some links in the description as well as a discount code for you guys as well if you're looking at picking one of these up. So once you consider the purchase price of the Logitech G920 steering wheel on top of that as well about 450 Australian dollars for one of those as it stands at the moment if you're buying brand new you're looking at around sort of the 600 to 650 dollar mark for everything that you see in front of me here. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this compares to my day-to-day -day rig that I'm using at the moment, which costs, what are we up to? I think we're up to about $25,000 now, not including the cost of the PC. So definitely gonna be an interesting comparison here, and I will be doing a separate video where I'll do some lap time comparisons between this setup and my day-to-day -day rig. Uh, but the focus of this video is gonna be assembling the cockpit here, or the stand, I shouldn't really be calling it a cockpit because it doesn't include a seat. Uh, getting the G920 mounted on it as well, and we'll take it for a quick drive to see how it goes in terms of rigidity and flex and stuff like that, and adjustability, all those things that you're gonna to wanna to know if you're looking at purchasing one of these. So just something that I do want to quickly note here is that this is going to be compatible with Next Level Racing seat add-on, which I believe is going to be released soon. That seat add-on is also going to be compatible with a direct drive wheel stand as well. So I'm yet to actually see what that looks like, but I think that's going to be a really interesting addition. And one thing that I am going to be focusing on this video is uh, how, I, how the stand actually goes with something like an office chair that has wheels on it, because obviously the movement of the seat and you know, particularly when you're pressing against a brake pedal, that can be a bit of a problem for some people. So we'll have a look at that in more detail once we go for a drive. So just a couple of other quick notes here as well. It does have a fully adjustable wheel platform, which obviously we'll be looking at in more detail, as well as the angle too, and adjustable pedal distance. So you can't actually adjust the pitch of the pedals on this particular cockpit. So anyway, let's jump in and get this unboxed, get it all assembled, get the G920 mounted on and take it for a drive. So we can see here in terms of the pedal mounting solution, we've got quite a lot of adjustability here. We can slide forward and backwards on these two here. We can also move everything forward if we need to. Now the reason why you're gonna need adjustability forward and backwards is because the pedal plate itself, which we'll take a look at in just a moment, isn't adjustable forward and back. So obviously, if you've got longer legs and shorter arms or a little bit disproportionate or something like that, then you are gonna need a little bit of adjustability here. So it's great that they include that. We're gonna leave it on the furthest away setting for now, simply because I've got quite long legs. But if you have a look at the bottom of the G920 pedals here, which is exactly the same as the G25, G27 as well, you've got these three little holes here or mounting screws here, and those coincide with the cutouts here as well. So with this slid all the way to the front, and this 
one slid all the way to the back, all of that should line up perfectly. So we'll flip it on its side now. We've got some little included bolts here as well that came in the package from Next Level Racing. So that's gonna make it super easy to install the pedal plate. Uh, we'll flip it on its side and get that done now. I've mentioned this before with Next Level Racing products, but you can see just how grubby my hands get from the oil. And this is the reason why I've got a tablecloth on my table, but you definitely don't want to be assembling this on your mum's carpet or anything like that because you will get these horrible oily brown stain marks all over the carpet. So I'm gonna go wash my hands now and then we'll have a look in more detail at the wheel platform. So hands are all cleaned up and we've lost the tablecloth as well to give us a bit more contrast here so we can have a look at this folding mechanism. So basically what this means is that when you're not using the rig, you can fold it away and it will fold down very nicely like that. Now you can see it is resting on top of the brake pedal there. Unfortunately, that's kind of unavoidable depending on what pedals you have. Uh, and another thing that we will look at is how you can kind of reach this pedal here with your, um, with your legs wrapped around the post as well. But we'll look at that once we start driving. But uh, if you don't have the pedals installed at all, you can fold it completely flat, which is really cool. But basically it's got a pin through the back here that it swivels on or pivots on. And then you've got this little quick release mechanism down here. So we'll zoom in quickly now and have a closer look at that. So the way this works is very, very simple. It latches over like so. And then you basically just clamp it up like that. So you might need to do a little bit of fine tuning adjustment to the U-bolt here, but they do include a little spanner as well in case you need to do that. So that's a nice little touch there. And then moving up here, we also have these knobs which we can loosen off to raise and lower the platform. So you can see there, we'll zoom up a little bit here. So looking at the full range of adjustability here from the bottom to the top here, we've got about just under 13 inches or about 32, just under 33 centimeters. So lots and lots of adjustability there, but let's take a closer look now at the wheel platform itself. Okay, so with the two bolts removed, you can see you've got four points of adjustability here. So we can go down to this one, down to this one or this one. So all the way up to 45 degrees angle, but you'll notice that it's pointing downwards. So you don't actually have any adjustment to pitch your wheel upwards. So we can't really rotate it around and have it able to point upwards instead of downwards without creating an issue. So it's a little bit of a strange design feature there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that because you'd think that it'd be more useful to be able to pitch it up. Now, depending on the wheel that you're using, obviously some of those have a sort of angle built into them by default. So in those cases, it wouldn't be a problem and you can actually use the pitch to adjust that out if you want it to be square. But yeah, it's a little bit interesting that there's no way to angle it upwards. You can only angle it downwards. So just something to be aware of there, but we'll put those bolts back in now and we'll get our wheel mounted. Okay, so we're all installed and ready to go now. But before we start driving, I just wanted to point out a couple of little things to you. So first of all, we can see now that we do actually have a bit of angle. I forgot that the G920 actually does angle the wheel upwards by default uh, because it's designed to be desk mounted. It has that angle already built into it. So that kind of makes more sense now as to why there's no adjustability here in terms of the wheel base where we were talking before. Uh, you can only angle it down. So you can actually cancel out the angle if you want it to be completely pointed straight towards your square. But uh, yeah, by default, it's already up. And most of the other wheelbases, I just had a quick look on the internet now, all the Thrustmaster wheelbases, basically every wheelbase that's designed to be desk mounted has that angle in it already. So what I was mentioning before about not being able to pitch the wheel platform upwards, I don't think is gonna be a problem for anybody because of that. So I just wanted to point that out first of all. Now we've got a couple of other little things here as well. We can take out one of these thumb screws and actually install that in a position here or a position here as well. So in the bottom position, where the thing is wound all the way down, what you would actually wanna do is actually have one of these right up the top or as close to the top as we possibly can, just to give us a little bit more rigidity here between the inner tube and the outer tube. Obviously, when we raise the platform much, which we're gonna to have to do once we get it on the ground, that's gonna to have to drop back down, but you wanna try and have those spaced apart as far as you can. Now, I'm really impressed with the design of this bottom bracket here, and we'll test it out once we've got it on the ground and check the rigidity. So just having a quick look at this pivot system here as well. Now this is really well designed, I think. Um, obviously once we got on the ground and we're driving, we'll have a look and comment on the flex and things like that. But because it's got these two brackets sort of welded on the sides here, that spreads the distortion or the, the, the forces across this beam here as well. And that seems to stop it flexing. And I mean, if I grab onto that, 
the flex that you're seeing there is actually the table moving, not the um, not the platform moving at all. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have already noticed this. I haven't commented on it yet, but I am going to comment on it now. I don't have my G920 shifter installed. Now there's a good reason for that. There is no shifter mounting bracket installed with this wheel stand. Now there is another wheel stand available from Next Level Racing, which does come with the shifter mounting bracket as well as an adjustable pedal plate, which also includes adjustment for pitch as well. So if you want to raise your pedals up to give you a more form style pedal position uh, now that is an extra 30 us dollars on top of the cost of this one so if you need to mount your shifter it's probably worth having a look at the racer versus the light and maybe looking at getting the light instead of the racer which is what this one is now i did have a look under the accessories section on the next level racing website as well and it doesn't look like they actually sell that as an optional accessory so just be aware of that guys if you are wanting to install your shifter as well you're up for another 30 us dollars to step up to the light version or you can fabricate something as well. It should be pretty simple to make a bracket. There are two nut certs here already, M8 nut certs to install something. But yeah, just be aware of that guys. So anyway, let's get this down on the floor now, get the PC all set up and go for a drive. So we are all set up here. It's funny going back to a setup like this because this is kind of where my sim racing journey started almost exactly a year ago now with my G27 and a single screen in front of me. So it's really funny being in this position, but back then I was using a wheel stand pro and I can already tell you that this is a lot more rigid than that was, uh, particularly in side to side movement. I always found with the wheel stand pro, the wheel would kind of want to tilt from side to side quite easily. Once you anchored it with your feet, it was a lot more secure, but this has got a lot of weight in the bottom and it's very, like I actually have to almost, you know, I have to use quite a lot of effort to get it to actually stand up on its side. So that's really good. Now, in terms of the, the pedal and everything moving around, so because this isn't a load cell pedal, when I push on the pedal, there's no problem with my seat rolling back or anything like that. Uh, obviously, if you're using load cell pedals, which this isn't really designed for anyway, then you would definitely need to anchor your seat. But with the G920 pedals, not a problem at all. Now, in terms of other flex and movement and stuff, I'm gonna let it speak for itself. We're gonna do a lap around Nürburgring in the Porsche 911 GT3 in uh, Project Cars 2. And I'll let you guys see for yourself how much flex there is and things like that, but I, I'm not anticipating it really being a problem. I mean, it has about the same amount of movement in it as the Challenger cockpit that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. But because this wheel is a lot less strong than the CSL Elite wheelbase, I don't really think I don't really see it being a problem with this wheel and you know when you consider the price point as well I, I really can't be too critical of it for having a little bit of movement in it so anyway let's head out on the track now and you guys can see for yourself exactly what's going on all right let's see if I can remember how to use a Logitech wheel just use the shifter to launch it rather than trying to use a clutch or anything whoops barge them out of the way it is project cars after all So I'm gonna let what you're seeing on the screen do most of the talking here. I'm not gonna try and describe too much, but I'm sort of, I'll tell you what I'm feeling, but then I'll go back and I'll watch the footage afterwards before giving my final thoughts to see whether what I'm feeling kind of translates to what you're seeing on the screen. It's carving the field here. <laughs> but I'm not feeling any flex whatsoever, so far at least. Um, the seat's not moving around, which I kind of, I expected here, because we're not dealing with high force feedback like we're used to. I do have the force feedback turned all the way up to 100%, but obviously coming from a wheelbase where I'm normally running about 15 Newton meters back to something that's running more like three or four, I think from memory, I think that's what the Logitech G920 is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but um, yeah, having a lot less force means a lot less, you know, stress on all the components and things like that. And I'm not feeling any flex or anything like that whatsoever here. Make sure we don't run out wide. There we go. I mean, obviously I'm struggling with the brake here because I'm used to a load cell and that's the biggest challenge, but um, this is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> I forgot how fun it is. I think I commented on this last video I did with the Challenger cockpit, how fun it is to just have a casual race where there's nothing at stake. I don't do that very often. Pretty much every race I ever do is in iRacing these days where I don't want to lose SR and I rating and things like that. So it's fun to just do something where it doesn't matter. But yeah, no problems with flex. Um, the, the wheelbase isn't moving around on the ground when I hit the brake or anything. Obviously with a load cell, it'd be very different. But this isn't designed to use with a load cell. So it doesn't really matter. 
but I feel like it's behaving, you know, exactly the way it should and as intended. I mean, it suits this wheel absolutely perfectly. I mean, the angle of the platform and everything's correct. Um, obviously, that's adjustable if we needed to, but um, yeah, everything just feels good. Whoop, try not to crash. It's so hard to catch slides and make fine little adjustments without the level of detail that I'm used to with the Simicube. Whoop. It's back out of it. I'll just let you guys watch for a little bit. I'll stop talking and you can just see for yourselves how much it's moving around or how little it's moving around. Certainly doesn't feel like it's moving around at least. Whoops. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> ah, I was right up with him too. It's a shame. One minute to go. I definitely lost some ground there. Let's see if we can gain it again. Catching them. Whoops. Oh, keep it straight. <laughs> I'm bouncing all over the place now. track left now to get this done. Whoa! Don't know what happened there, but I'll take it. Made me jump. I'm glad I wasn't wearing my VR headset for that. That would have scared the shit out of me. Oh no! <laughs> oh, come on. Keep going, keep going. Oh, that sucks. There's only like four corners left to go too. I only lost one position, but um, unfortunate. No idea where to break. I'll use these lights as a guide. Whoop, I'm gonna lose a spot. No! <laughs> it 
might have been an illegal block. Yay, third place. Project Cars 2 winner. <laughs> All right, I'll go and have a watch of the footage and then uh, give you my final thoughts. Okay, so I've just watched the footage and I've got to say what I was feeling tied in pretty well with what you guys could see in the footage. A little bit of movement there, but certainly not enough to sort of detract from the overall immersion and experience of driving. And I think that this uh, this wheel platform is well suited, this, this wheel stand is well suited to something like a Logitech G920, a G25, G27, something like that. I think it works really well and for the money, I really don't think you can go wrong. So unlike with the Challenger cockpit where I felt like it was sort of probably not quite doing the CSL Elite justice. I feel like if you're on a tight budget and you're after something like a Logitech G920 and you're looking for a relatively cheap wheel stand to put this on, I think this really does tick all the boxes. It would be really great to also have the addition of a shifter, but you do have the option of stepping up to the light edition, which comes with the shifter as well as the adjustable pedal plate to give you a bit more pitch on the pedals as well. That's only an extra, what is it, 20 or $30 US to step up to that one as well. So overall, got to say really impressed. It was all completely pretty much assembled out of the box as well. All we really had to do was just mount our pedals and our wheel and we were good to go so all in all i'd say you know about 20 minutes of setup and you're good to start racing so guys hopefully you found this video interesting and useful if you have as always hit the thumbs up button make sure you're subscribed and of course hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss the next video we'll also be doing a bit of a comparison between the g920 and my normal day-to-day -day driving setup as well to see if i can get anywhere close to my normal sort of lap times so that should be interesting as well. But uh, yeah, guys, if you're interested in picking up one of these wheel stands or a Logitech G920 or any of the other gear that you've seen in my videos, links are all in the description below for you. There's also a discount code there as well for Next Level Racing. So check that out. But guys, I will see you again in the next video. Bye.